Praise the Lord. This is Revival is Here Ministries by Senior Pastor, Pastor Chan Smith. I pray that you get something out of God's Word and God blesses you greatly today. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for tuning in to this week's podcast. It's podcast 73 titled New Beginnings. God put it on my heart to talk about this. Ben's just going to be a new year. It's important we learn about new beginnings because some people, you might need a new beginning. You feel like your life is... Uh, this up against the wall you feel like you just can't go anywhere you can't move forward and you often tell yourself you that you need a new beginning well this podcast is talking about that i know you're going to get blessed by it and i encourage you just to receive what god has for you and i encourage you to let god to touch you because god wants to touch you and love on you i don't care what you have done he wants to touch you and love on you in a powerful way and you know what god hasn't given up on you people might have given up on you but god hasn't given up on you and he loves you and he wants to use you in a powerful way. You need to see that and you need to receive that in the name of Jesus. Just receive that. God isn't going to force himself on you. People might try to force themselves on you, but God will never do that. He is a perfect gentleman. Are you receiving that tonight? Whatever time of day that you're listening to this, are you receiving that? Because you need to know that God loves you, but all you have to do is let him love on you. That's right. You let God love on you. You might be saying to yourself, well, well he is God. Why should I have to let him love on me? Well, like I said, he's not going to force himself on you. He wants you to want him. You hear what I'm saying? He wants you to want to be in a relationship with him. So just be in a relationship with God because he wants to know you intimately. And he wants you to know him. You hear what I'm telling you? He wants you to know him. That's right. And he has plans for you. So you just know that God loves you. That's right. God loves you. So like I said, you're going, we're going into this new year. Sometimes uh, you might be saying that set the, you might set goals and things for the new year. And you might be saying, well, this new year is not going to get any better. It's just always going to be the same old, same old thing. And it's just all these bad things are going to keep happening to you. You might be saying that to yourself. But when you start this new year in God, it will be a good year. It will be moving forward for you. Things will get better. It might get difficult at times. You still, you might still be going through a spiritual warfare and you... But ultimately, it, you will be better. The devil will try to stop you. He will try to come against you. But it's important that you just stand in the Lord. You stand with Jesus and he will be there for you. You might not have a relationship with Jesus. But you can have that tonight. And you start your new year off better and good. Because you will be in a relationship with Jesus. Things might have happened to you this past year. It might have been really bad. Things 
one thing after another might have happened to you and you feel like you just don't want to go any further that you don't even want to see the new year you might be feeling that but don't give up don't give up you just have what God has for you and you hang in there and be strong God has plans for you let's read that it's in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you into a place from which I call you to be carried away captive. That's really powerful. God has plans for you. He has thoughts toward you says the thoughts of peace and not of evil for a future and a hope in another translation that says I know the plans I have for you it says in the ESV for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans for for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. That is a powerful set of verses. All those verses that I read for you. He said you call upon him and he will hear you. You seek him and you will find him. That is a good set of verses. You need to grab a hold of this. Says, God has something for you. He wants to use you in a powerful way, and you have to let him use you. Seek him, and you will find him. Seek him tonight, or whatever time of day that you're listening to this, you seek him, and you will find him. So in this new year, you need to see that God has a plan for you for the good. So this new beginnings... Let's talk about in the new beginnings. It's in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. I've already quoted this many times, but I'm going to read this to you again. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God is in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. I read it through uh, verse 21. So I read in 2 Corinthians 5, started at 17, and read through verse 2, verse 21 all the way through there and I wanted to uh, keep continuing reading on but it says that in 17 If you're in Christ you are a new creation old things have passed away and behold all things have become new That's a pretty good new beginnings verse there isn't it for the next year for the new year. That's a good new beginnings you need to see that God has something powerful for you in this new year. God has given me a word for this uh, new year. I'm not going to say it right, go into it right now. I'm going to do it in another podcast in a revival radio service. 
but God has a good things in store for you. And you need to see that in the name of Jesus. So let's read in Isaiah 43. It's in 19. It says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praises. That is really good. He's going to do a new thing. He says he's going to make roads in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And talk about praising him, declare his praises. You need to grab a hold of this. He's going to do a new thing. He's going to make a road in the wilderness. You might be uh, saying that you're in a wilderness. That you can't make it. You can't find your way out. But God said he's going to make a road, a road in the wilderness. So you will be able to find your way out. And there's also a scripture that says the steps of the righteous person is already laid out. And all they have to do is walk in it. So he's going to make a road in the wilderness. And you might be saying that you're going through a dry place right now. You're going through a dry time in your life. Well, what does it say here? It's going to make rivers in the desert. So you know what? You might be in a desert, but God is going to bring a river to that desert you're in. And it's because it says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Are you receiving this? Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. So he is that road, and he will uh, help you out of that wilderness that you are in this new year. You need to receive this. God has something for, for you, and he wants you to uh, just uh, flow in what he has. You need to receive that. Glory, hallelujah. Let's start reading the 18 right before that, verse 18. It says, Do you not remember the former things, not consider the old things? Behold, I do a new thing. So in other words, it, it's the old things that be done and all things that become new. That He's going to do a new thing. And we need to uh, just walk in that new thing that God has for us. Now, here's a good verse in Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 through 24. It says, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because, he has compassion, because his compassion failed not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. His, it's new every morning. His mercies are new every morning. And you will not be consumed because of his compassion for you and it fails not. You need to receive that and run with it. That's a powerful verse. I really thank the Lord for his mercy. And it's new every morning. So you might be wanting to give up, but I am telling you not to give up because God is there for you. He loves you, and he wants to use you in a powerful way. And you need to grab a hold of this. You need to grab a hold of this in the name of Jesus so because God loves you, and he has a new thing for you this coming year. He has a new thing for you, and it will be powerful. It will bring you through that wilderness that you're in and that dry desert that you're in. Glory, hallelujah. Let's read in Revelation 21, 4. It says, As, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things that passed away. And that's talking about in the, the future 
when the New Jerusalem and things, that's what that's talking about. But I was wanting to read that because it's, it's talking about a new beginning. So formal thing, former things have passed away. So you can have a new beginning. And you need to receive that in the name of Jesus. Now I want to read a, uh, a long set of scriptures here. It's in uh, Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to read um, verse 1 through 14. It says, Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth and all these Blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed, blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Okay, now that's talking about your children. They're going to be blessed too. So, And let's continue to read. The produce of your ground and the increase of your herd, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. So that's all going to be blessed. Blessed shall you, blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. So it means you're going to cook good. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah, I like that. Blessed shall be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. So everywhere you go, that you're going to be blessed. Everywhere you go, you're going to be blessed. And it says, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. Then shall they shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. So when people come against you, they may come at you one way, but they're going to flee seven ways. They won't be able to get away from you fast enough. You hear what I'm telling you? They won't be able to get away from you fast enough. That they will not be able to... Uh, succeed when they come against you this is powerful and i hope you're receiving that i really do i hope you're receiving this let's continue reading verse 8 the lord will command the blessings on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand and he will bless you in the land which the lord your god is giving you going to be blessed glory hallelujah i like this the lord will establish you as a holy people to himself just as he swore unto you if you keep the commandments of the lord your god and walk in his ways then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the lord and they shall be afraid of you and the lord will grant you plenty of goods and the fruit of your body and the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. You shall tend you, excuse me, you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, you shall not turn aside from any of the words which... I command you this day to the right or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. Okay, now what is the commandment? We have to I already did a podcast and a revival radio service on that. It's love. We are to love and have love. That is the commandment. So when you do that commandment, when you're in a new cabinet, that's the commandment that we follow. When you do that, all these blessings are going to be on you. You're going to be blessed. You're going to have a... Um, you're going to prosper. All these blessings. Your children are going to be blessed. They're going to prosper. You're going to have food. You're going to be able to cook good. It's in your kneading bowl. You're going to, it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. 
So all those uh, blessings will be on you. Shower blessings upon you that you won't be not be able to contain. That's powerful. That's some good blessings there, isn't it? I receive that. And I want that in my life. And you can have that in your life. You have a good new beginning. This new year will be the best year you've ever had. New beginnings in the Lord. And you need to receive that and walk with that in the name of Jesus. I want those blessings, don't you? I want those blessings on my life. And the glory, hallelujah. And I know it's not but what I've done. It's what Jesus did for me. So you need to see that God wants you to have a, a good year next, this new year. And every day he wants you to be blessed, to prosper. I speak a new beginning in your life for the better. I speak it in the name of Jesus. Because some of you that's listening to this might be going through a hard time. You might be wanting to give up. But God tells you not to give up. That he's going to be there for you. And you just hang in there. You hear what I'm telling you. You just hang in there. And you be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Some of you have went through, th went through things this past year. That you said that if you went through that. The shoes won't give up. There's no way that you can make it through that. Well, that happened. And it's like maybe three or four things that you always said. That if this happened, then I won't be able to make it. But some of you that's listening to this, those three or four things all happened to you at one time. And one of them was enough for you to give up if that happened. But all of those things that you said, if that happens, you want to give up. All of those things happened to you. So you feel like you want to give up, but you can't make it. You just, you just don't want to go any farther. But God is telling you to hang in there. There's a new beginning coming your way. And you will make it in the name of Jesus. You will make it. And God will make you prosper. And he will be blessed in your coming in and going out. Everywhere you go, you will be blessed. Glory, hallelujah. Those blessings covered everything. And I'm excited about that. Since all these promises are yes and amen for them that love the Lord. So this is the promises that prophecy was for you. There's a good positive, a good uh, prophecy. It's a good promise and it's in the Bible. So receive it in the name of Jesus. Just put your name in it. So you're going to have that things. You're going to have that. Glory, hallelujah. Just receive that in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Just say that. I, I feel led to do this. Some of you just need this. Just uh, say this. Put your name in this. Say, blessed will I be in the city and blessed shall I be in the country. Say that. Say Just say I because you're saying it about yourself. Say, blessed shall I be in the city and blessed shall I be in the country. Blessed shall the fruit of my body. Say, say this, repeat this. Say, blessed shall be the fruit of my body, the produce of my ground, and the increase of my herds, the increase of my cattle, and the offspring of my flocks. Blessed shall be my basket and my kneading bowl. Okay, now don't give up on me now. You just continue to repeat this after me. Just put your name in this. The blessed shall I be when I come in, and blessed shall I be when I go out. Oh, that's powerful. And the Lord will cause my enemies who rise against me to be defeated before my face. They shall come out against me one way, and flee before me seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on me and my storehouses and to all to which I set my hand and he will bless me in the land which the Lord my God is giving me. Glory, hallelujah.
stop right there. You know, it said we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So it's talking about being a holy people on there in that verse. We are a holy people because we are born again. We are righteous and we holy. We are holy because he made us righteous and holy. So when he's talking about holy people, we are a holy people, a holy royal priesthood, a holy generation, a holy nation. So that is for us. So you say that. If you're having a hard time, just say that every day. Just proclaim that. That's in Deuteronomy 28. That, what I called it was in uh, verses uh, 3 through uh, 8. So you put as talking about you when you read that and you read it out loud. So that's really important that you do that. Because if you're having a hard time, it's really good to just say it out loud. Just to get it in your spirit and just proclaim it in the name of Jesus. The devil hates the spoken word. He hates it. So you proclaim it in the name of Jesus and claim it for you. That's right. You claim that for you because God wants to do a powerful thing for you. And you just receive that in the name of Jesus. You receive what God has for you in the name of Jesus. Jesus, whoo, glory, hallelujah. Let me pray for you. God, I ask you to bless them in the name of Jesus. I ask you, God, to touch them, God, in the name of Jesus. Heal them, God, in the name of Jesus. Help them have a good year in the name of Jesus. Help them have a good new year, God. Let them be the, have the best year they've ever had, God, in the name of Jesus. I ask you, God, to heal them. Whatever illness that they have, God, I ask you to heal them in the name of Jesus and set them free, God, in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. I ask you, God, that you give them a strength to make it through whatever they are going through, God. You give them a strength and a boldness to make it, God, in the name of Jesus. Since so the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I ask you, God, that you give them joy, God, in the name of Jesus. You give them a joy unspeakable and full of glory, God, in the name of Jesus. You just pour your oil of joy all upon them, God, in the name of Jesus. Instead of mourning, God, you give them an oil of joy, God, in the name of Jesus. Some of them have been mourning too long, God, and you want to pull them out of that and have them, make them have a better life, God, in the name of Jesus. I ask you, God, to send a breakthrough to them, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. I feel somebody out there is receiving this. I feel there's somebody that's really having a powerful breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. And I encourage you to receive that in the name of Jesus. Don't back up. You just move forward with what God has for you. You move forward and God will do powerful things in you. Glory, hallelujah, and through you in the name of Jesus. Whoo, glory, hallelujah. I really feel that somebody is receiving a blessing from God during this podcast. I feel that in the name of Jesus. I know that you're listening to this, you're getting encouraged, and we are to encourage one another in the Lord. That's what we are supposed to do. So I encourage you tonight, I encourage you to not give up, to hang in there, and God will have a blessing for you. He has a blessing for you. You are to receive that in the name of Jesus. So don't give up. Whoo, glory, hallelujah, I felt that. Glory, hallelujah. God will be there for you, and you just let him touch you in a powerful way. I know, uh, I'm sorry I said this, but I know you might be going through really hard times. This, this past year might have been the worst year that you ever went through. That's, uh, all these things have happened to you, and you just feel like you just don't, you just feel like you want to give up. You feel like you just can't make it anymore, that you just don't know how you can just do anything. You just feel like you just want to stay in bed all the time. It's really bad on you, really hard on you. You just feel like you just want to uh, forget about everything. You just want to give up everything. You just want to close the door in your room and just not get out anymore ever. You just, you just want to give up. But God is telling you that he has something for you. And he's speaking to you new beginnings. 
That's what he is speaking to you. New beginnings. God spoke this to me to do this podcast on this. New beginnings. And he has something powerful for you. A, a new thing. He's going to do around you and through you. He's going to do a new thing. And you are to receive that in the name of Jesus. Like I said, God isn't going to force himself on you. He's not going to force you to have a blessing. He's not going to do that. He wants you to receive it in the name of Jesus. You open that gift up. Like we just went through Christmas time. You get these gifts. You got to open, open the gifts up. Well, open that gift up that he has for you. Open that blessing up. Open the gifts of the Spirit up. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Open that blessing that God has for you. Open it up. Rip the wrapping off of it. And receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive the gift he has for you. Reach out and receive the gift that he has for you in the name of Jesus. He has a blessing for you and he wants you to receive it. Glory, hallelujah. Ooh, I feel that. I want to encourage you in the Lord. You might have done some bad things, but you know what? It don't matter what you have done. All that matters is what Jesus did for you. Of course, you're going to do good things, but that's not you doing good things is not what makes you born again. Jesus makes you born again. Because of that, you will do good things. I'm not telling you to just go out and do whatever you uh, want, just, just uh, do all that, this stuff. I'm not saying that. But what I'm telling you is it doesn't matter what you have done. He wants to love on you, and he will change you. You hear what I'm telling you? You don't have to change yourself. You might want to give up. One reason because you keep trying to get off of these things that you want to get free from, and you can't. You want to get off of that stuff, and you just try and try and try, and you can't. You want to give up. That's because you're trying. Let Jesus do it for you because he already did it. By his stripes you were healed. You're already healed and you're already free. You just receive it in the name of Jesus. That's the problem. You keep, you're trying to do it on your own works. We can't do it on our own works. Our willpower is not anybody's, whoever it is, their own willpower, willpower is not good enough to set themselves free of drugs, alcohol, and any of that other things. Their own willpower isn't enough to do it. Jesus has to do that. He, Because you're trying to resist it yourself, but he will know, he will more than just give you the strength to resist it. He will make it to where you don't have to resist it because he will remove that urge from you. So you won't have to even fight that urge. Of course, you might have a temptation, but it will just be a passing thought that you will cast aside because it exalts itself above the word of God. Are you hearing that? Are you receiving this? Are you hearing what I'm telling you tonight? Ooh, glory, hallelujah. Because you've been trying to do it on your own, but you can't. You want to give up. But God is telling you not to give up. There's a blessing around the corner. New beginnings for you this new year. Are you receiving that? New beginnings for this new year. Glory, hallelujah. Whoo, glory, hallelujah. God is good, and he wants to love on you. He wants to show you how much he loves you. He wants to show you that. He wants to give you some presents. That's right. You just receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive those presents that God has for you. He wants to give you some good things. It says in the Bible, it talks about how much more will you, our Heavenly Father give us good things. It said your earthly parents do that. So how much more will your Heavenly Father give us good things? So he wants to give you some good things. Some of you might not have had family that gave you good things. But you know what? you got a Heavenly Father. And he wants to give you some good things. All you have to do is receive it in the name of Jesus. You just be in a relationship with him and tell him you love him. That's right. Tell God you love him and he will tell you and show you how much he loves you. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. You just need to receive that in the name of Jesus. And God is speaking to you new beginnings. So let's continue on in scripture because I felt glad to say all that stuff that I, that I said. It says in 1 John chapter 4 verse 18. It's 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. 
but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. That's a pretty good new beginning uh, new beginnings verse, isn't it? It says, perfect love cast out fear. So that's a pretty good way to start out your know, new year is to have perfect love so you can have no fear. That's a pretty good way to start out the new year, isn't it? So you need to receive that. Glory, hallelujah. You need to receive that because that is a, the perfect way to start out a new year is to have perfect love. And God wants to show you his perfect love for you. Like I've already said, glory, hallelujah. He wants to pour his spirit out upon you and you need to receive it in the name of Jesus. Let's read another Bible verse. It's in uh, Luke chapter 7, verse 47. That's Luke chapter 7, verse 47. It says, therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. She loves much because she was forgiven much. And that's a powerful set of verses. Matter of fact, that is a perfect new beginnings verse. Is that she was forgiven much, so she loved much. She had I said her many sins, but they were forgiven. So she loved much. You need to receive that because you might be saying that you've done a lot of things and you feel like you just want to give up. But everything that you have done will be forgiven if you ask Jesus to forgive you of it. So you will love much. Now I already read that little story about all the that uh, led up to that so I'm not going to go in to read that but you just know that he loves you and he wants to love on you and he will defend you in the name of Jesus other people said they will defend you and haven't but Jesus will defend you and he will love on you and he will forgive you in the name of Jesus let's read in Acts 3 verse 19 it says, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. I love that verse, and that is a good, powerful verse. It says, uh, So times of refreshing may come. And that's a good new beginning. It's verse of times of refreshing. And God wants to refresh you in the name of Jesus. He wants to do a new thing in you. So I encourage you to just let God refresh you. Let him come and touch you in the name of Jesus. And he will. So let's talk about another one. It says in 1 John 1. I mean, uh, in John 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and that light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And that's a pretty good new beginning when uh, God created uh, everything, wasn't it? It's, just, <laughs> it's a really good beginning, new beginning. It's a be the beginning. So I wanted to read that. It's talked about Jesus in that. So through Jesus, you can have a new beginning. Through Jesus, you can and will have a new beginning. And you need to receive that in the name of Jesus. Of course, in John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's a pretty good new beginning, isn't it? Have eternal life. So you need to receive what God has for you. God has things for you. And he wants you to prosper and to be in health just as your soul prospers. 
He has things for you, and he wants this new year to be the best year that you ever had. And you know what? Other people might be telling you that you can't have any good thing, that God can't use you, that they might be telling you that. They might be telling you that you're worthless and you can never amount to anything. But you know what? God tells you that is that is a lie from the devil because God wants to use you. He wants to touch you. I don't care what you have done. He wants to have good things for you. So you don't listen to those people and the devil that's been coming against you. you re, it says, resist the devil and he shall flee from you. And it also says, cast out every argument and every high thing that's in your mind that exalts itself against the word of God. Cast all those imaginations and every thought that exalts itself against the word of God. And cast it out aside in the name of Jesus. God loves you and he has good things for you and you don't have to earn salvation because you can't. You, you receive it as a gift. You receive his blessings as a gift. You can't earn them. You receive them in the name of Jesus. Of course, there's you tithe in things and you give and he will shower blessings upon you. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about though a uh, spiritual blessings when it comes to the gifts of the spirit and, uh, having a new beginning and salvation you cannot earn salvation it's a gift so, and you know what you can have a new beginning you can be prosperous God has the blessings for you in the name of Jesus glory hallelujah Woo! receive it in the name of Jesus glory hallelujah some of you might be going through a lot of health problems but you need to know that God loves you and he wants to uh, heal you in the name of Jesus. You might be going through some mental problems, some, some depression and things, but God loves you and he wants to heal you in the name of Jesus, set you free from that mental torment in the name of Jesus. Because it says to cast all those uh, thoughts that exalts itself above the word of God, cast it out in the name of Jesus. Don't let the devil rob you of your joy. Don't let him. Don't let the devil rob you of that joy the joy of the Lord. Don't let him rob you because he will try, but he cannot succeed. He will try, but he will fail because it says you resist the devil and he will flee from you. So you resist the devil and he will flee. Don't let him rob you of that joy that God has given you in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Don't let him rob you of it. Here's a good set of verses I want to read to you. It's in Psalms 121. I'm just going to read the whole chapter. It's in Psalms chapter 121. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall n neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. That's pretty good, isn't it? He's going to preserve. There's another one going out and you're coming in. There's another one there confirming it. God's going to bless you in everything that you do. He's going to keep you. He's going to protect you in everything that you do. That He's going to bless, it, bless you with it in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. That's powerful. And I hope you receive that. I pray that you just grab a hold of it in the name of Jesus and run with it because God has good things for you. He's going to bless you everywhere you go. Glory, hallelujah. Let's read in uh, Micah. Here's a good one, Micah 4, 2. Many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of, God, of the, the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion the law shall go forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. 
that's a pretty good verse there. And uh, I'm like, when you're uh, born again, we are the church when we're born again. Not a, really, per se, a church building. We are the body of Christ. And it's talking about many nations who will come to us and uh, that we will teach them. So that's a good verse. That wasn't really the verse that I was wanting to look up. But I know God brought me to that. And I, that's a good verse. So when, uh, now you need to receive that. So you may, you'll well will be a good teacher. And that's a gift from God. The, the teaching is the ability. So some of you out there, you wanting to teach. And you feel that you can't. And that'll tell you a confirmation for you right there. I just felt that that's why the God wanted me to read that verse. You want to teach people. And and I feel that that's a confirmation. And that might be one of the new beginnings that God has for you to be a teacher. So you pursue that. If, that's a, if you feel that that's what God is leading you to do, you just do it in the name of Jesus. It's reading Malachi 4, verse 2. It's Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. It says, But to you who fear my name, the son, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked for they shall be ashes under your soles of your feet on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. That's a pretty good verse. There's another good blessing about you going out. Glory, hallelujah. God is going to send you out. I feel that. That's what God is saying. He's going to send you out. He has a new beginning for you. God is going to do a good thing in you, a good work. You need to receive that in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. That's what God has for you. He might be going to send you out as a teacher. I don't know. Some of you just listen to this. Maybe God, I think God has put it on your heart to be a teacher. You just want a confirmation, and there's your confirmation. You need to pursue that. If that's what you feel God has called you to do, and you have that urge to do it, just do it. In the name of Jesus, glory, hallelujah, because it's a powerful thing to teach people. Might be uh, children in, in school. I don't know. Young people, teenagers, might be adults. But it's a really powerful thing to teach people to disciple people. That's that's what we're called to do anyway. So if if you feel a drive to do that, I encourage you to just go out and to teach people. I encourage you. That's some of you, some people that you need to hear that you has been praying about that, and you pray that God will give you a confirmation. There's your confirmation right there. So you just walk with what God has for you, and you just study. If you got to go to a college, if you can afford it, or maybe it's in church. So you study the Bible and uh, ask your uh, pastor if there's an opening to teach somebody, people, or to have a small group and or Bible study or something like that. I, that might be what God is calling you to do. And whatever you feel they led to do, or it might be in school. You God might is put on your heart to be teaching in grade schools or regular schools or in colleges. I don't know. But you just walk with, with what God has for you. You just walk in hit that step that he's already laid out before you. It's a new beginning. I feel that God is going to lead a lot of people into, uh, into a better job they've always longed to do. And I believe that God is going to move them into that in the name of Jesus. So the wealth of the wicked are stored up for the righteous. And I feel that that's God is going to do that in it right now in these last end day in times. I really feel that God has something powerful for you. I really feel that. I really feel that He's going to even bless you more than you even possibly dreamed. That you feel that you wasn't worthy, but you always had this uh, hunger to do uh, something for Him or to have a better job, and you've always felt that you couldn't do it. You wasn't worthy. And you always doubted yourself. But I feel God is going to put a confidence inside of you and to have confidence and walk in boldness. And you just to receive what God has for you. And I feel that you're going to have a, such a blessing this new year. I feel that you're going to have a lot of good blessings come upon you. And 
I feel that you're going to be promoted and you're going to just walk in what God has for you to be good new beginnings. And you just receive that in the name of Jesus. You receive what God has for you and just don't hold back. You move forward in the name of Jesus. Walk in boldness. Glory, hallelujah. As it says, the righteous are as bold as a lion. So you need to be bold as a lion. Just be bold as a lion and receive what God has for you. Are you hearing that? Receiving that in the name of Jesus? Are you receiving that? So you just need to know that because some of you have been doubting yourself. I've already talked about that before in previous podcasts and, and revival services, revival radio services. I already talked about about not doubting yourself. They don't doubt. But you need to know that you need to uh, have a confidence and don't doubt yourself because sometimes that doubt will hold you back. It'll hold you back in your relationship with God. It'll hold you back in your job and your relationships and lots of things. A blessing. That doubt Will, will hinder your blessing so you need to have faith and don't doubt yourself and don't doubt God and you just need to move forward with what God has for you some of you have been having relationship problems because you're always doubting yourself and that's really affecting your relationship and it's making the unhealthy relationships you might always be getting into fights and things because you're doubting yourself but you don't need to doubt yourself you need to know who you are in Christ and not doubt yourself just move forward with, with what God has for you. And because it, it says in God's word, you know, you're righteous because Jesus makes you righteous. You're holy because he makes you holy. Are you receiving that? When you're born again, like I've read in the scriptures, you're a new person, a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. So therefore, the person that you was is not you anymore. So that's the reason not to doubt yourself because that's not you anymore. You're a new person. What's really, it's not even you. It's it's Jesus because it says, it's not I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. So don't doubt yourself because if God has called you to do something, he will make sure that it can be done through him. So you need to have a confidence. And that's your job. You need to know you need to have a confidence because of God wants you to have good things. If you're having a hard time in the job that you're in and they keep doing a lot of bad things for you, you can't get off of work to go to church and things and it's really hold you back in the ministry, you need to know that God has something for you. So don't doubt yourself. God has something for you and he will bring it to pass. Glory, hallelujah. God has good things for you. And you need to know that God wants you to receive that. You receive the gifts that he has for you. And I haven't, I don't feel a lift, I don't feel a release yet from this. So I'm going to keep talking about it, about doubt. And some of you, that doubt is really holding you back really bad. That you've been doubting yourself really bad. Or somebody might have passed away. And because of that, you've been doubting yourself because you relied on them kind of for your uh, affirmation and for things you rely on them and when they passed away you've been doubting yourself ever since that you've been having a hard time making it you so things one thing after another has been happening well one reason it could be I'm, I'm, well, I'm not saying it's your fault but one reason it could be because you're doubting yourself but, so you need not to doubt yourself because doubt is really unhealthy it really is and it really holds you back because you blame yourself a lot when everything that happens you blame yourself and you might even overanalyze it thinking it's your fault you've done this and you're you've done that so that doubt is really holding you back in reality when things are happening it's it's the devil will do the bad things is and you keep doubting yourself all the time and that's no good so you just need to have a confidence and you know who you are in Christ which I've already did plenty of teachings on that you need to know who you are in Christ and have a boldness and have a confidence. I said this study to show yourself approved. You know, you're showing yourself approved for yourself. So you have a confidence and you won't doubt yourself. So it's important to have a confidence and not to have doubt. Because that doubt will grow into a hate and anger, it will grow into horrible things. It will push you into a drug addictions and lots of things. 
and alcoholism and lots of other things and bad relationships you will get in bad relationships because you feel that you can't have a good person in your life so you'll date a bad a person that treats you bad that they don't work and they hit you all the time and they make you do all these horrible things and they force themselves on you and I'm not blaming you but I'm saying that that doubt will lead you to uh, very unhealthy relationships and you can't have that person sometimes that God has for you because of your, you doubt that you're worthy of that that person you, that you doubt and that you're worthy of a good person that can be there for you you doubt and that, is that you're worthy of a good Christian person so you need to remove that doubt from you because it will really hold you back and will lead into a Leviathan spirit or maybe Jezebel spirit and lots of other things so you need to get rid of that doubt purge yourself from that in the name of Jesus ask God to help you with that Read that verse that I told you to read earlier. Just keep reading that out loud about you being blessed. And read other good uh, verses in the Bible and put your name in there. Saying that you're blessed and you have confidence and that you're bold as a lion and things. Quote that. Keep quoting that and get that in your spirit. And just uh, have a reputation. Hear it. You know, speak it out loud so you can hear it. And just proclaim it in the name of Jesus. Spoken words have power. So it's very important that you don't speak out doubtful, hurting words about yourself and, and negative words saying things will happen because uh, that will make it not happen. There's plenty of times in the Bible there's a situation with Elizabeth that God made her husband and he couldn't speak until John was born because God didn't want... Uh, Zacharias, I believe it was his name, didn't want him to hinder, to harm John's birth by uh, having a doubt, negative attitude. So it's really important that we not doubt and have faith because spoken word is powerful. You need to quote God's word. Quote it over your situation. Quote it over your life and have a confidence and don't doubt. You might be having a lot of relationship issues and things, but it could be because, of, like I've said, that you've doubted yourself. You have a horrible opinion of yourself, and it usually always leads into fights and other things in relationships. So you need to have a confidence, and when you have that confidence, God will bring somebody across your path that needs to be there and who he wants you to be with. But it was to be in turn, you need to have confidence, and you not push that person overwhelmingly. And if God wants it to happen, he'll make it happen. So when, one thing about having confidence and not doubting that you have, and is that you have patience. You will have pay, more patience, and you will know that God will take care of the situation. I know some that you got to do take care of situations sometimes, and you got to be bold. And I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is when you have a more patience in in relationships and things that and not have doubt then it will have a more flourishing and have a more healthy relationship so I encourage you not to have doubt and the word God has given me for you well, it's not the the main word that God has given me for next year this new year but one the words that God has given me is the for you for a personal word is the new beginning. God is going to have new beginnings for you. You're going to have a lot better year this coming year. It's going to be a lot better. I feel that. And that one re one way that that can happen is you not have a doubt that you will be bold. It says righteous are as bold as a lion. And you have a confidence. So you receive that in the name of Jesus. And God loves you. And he wants to love on you. If you're listening to this and you're not born again, but you want to be born again, you can be born again. You can have that right now in the name of Jesus. You have the hunger inside of you, and you just want God to love on you. You just want Jesus to love on you. You can have that. You can have the love of God inside of you. You can have perfect love inside of you. And I know that there's people out there that's listening that want to be born again. I know that with, with all of my heart, I know that. That's the greatest miracle of all. And I'm not going to beat uh, you over the head saying you're going to hell. I don't work that way. I don't. I just work on the, through the leading of the Holy Spirit. 
And most of the time, the Holy Spirit don't lead me that way. But what I'm telling you is God loves you and he wants to love on you. That's it because it says the goodness of God leads people to repentance. And God has good things for you. He has a good life ahead of you. And he wants you just to receive it. One way you receive it, if you're not born again, is to be born again. You must be born again to receive full blessings from God. You must be born again. So if you want to receive what God has for you, you want to be in relationship with God, you can have that right now. Repeat this after me. Say, Dear Jesus, of course you need to mean it with all your heart and then believe it. And just have faith. Just repeat this after me. Say, Dear Jesus, come and live inside of me. Be the Lord of my life. I repent of all of my sins and I ask you to forgive me of them. Wash me in your blood, Jesus. Make me a new person, a new creature. Make old things pass away and all things become new. Make me righteous and make me holy, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I confess and accept that you died on the cross and rose from the dead for me and you ascended to heaven. I confess that you are the only way to heaven, Jesus, and that you are the Lord of my life. Write me in a book of life, Jesus. And Jesus, I ask you right now to baptize me in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Jesus, give me my prayer language, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Jesus, I ask you that your glory will follow me and you will use me to lead other people to you, Jesus. And Jesus, that you will use me to... Sh to share your love to others, God, so they can be born again, and you will use them too, Jesus. I ask you to use me, Jesus, in a powerful way, and I want to thank you, Jesus, that I am now born again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. If you just said that, you're now born again. Your name is written in the book of life. That is the greatest miracle of all. So you can email me at chan at revivalishere.org or write to me at revivalishere ministries. P.O. Box 243, Bedford, Kentucky, 40006. I encourage you to do that. If you live in America, give me your mailing address. We'll do our best to send you a New Testament free of charge and a teaching CD so you can get into God's Word. I encourage you to do that. And I know God has a blessings for you this coming year, and I'm excited that you got born again. Some people even got baptized with the Holy Spirit. Just uh, move your mouth and let that prayer language flow out of you if you got baptized with the Holy Spirit. I encourage you to continually refresh yourself in the Lord and don't give up. I am Pastor Chan Smith. I'm founder and senior pastor of Revivals Here Ministries. And I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. Give you a little bit of information. If you want to help to financially support the ministry, you can. The ministry is a 501c3 tax exempt ministry. So we get all of our donations through public donations from people like you. So if God has put it on your heart to donate, I encourage you to do that. We need the financial donations to be able to get on television to reach people to keep the podcast going and the revival radio services going there needs to be money to do that and the bible outreaches and the cd outreach and lots of the other things it costs lots of money to do all these things so we need your help you can do that by going to revivalishere.org slash support i encourage you to do that that's revivalishere.org slash support click on the donate now button use your credit card checking account or debit card. I encourage you if you can just use your checking account. It's, there's less fees with that. So I encourage you to do that. And uh, create a uh, account if you can. So you can view your donation history. You can set a reoccurring, date, reoccurring donation. I encourage you to do that. And it's a secure site. It's a really good site. We keep all the records of it. So you can take it off your taxes. So I encourage you to do that. That's revivalishere.org slash support. Or if you want to mail your donation... Make your check or money order payable to Revival Share Ministries. And you can mail it to Revival Share Ministries, P.O. Box 243, Bedford, Kentucky, 40006. Of course, the mailing address is also at revivalishere.org slash support. Or you can go to the main page of revivalishere.org and the mailing address will be there. And you can click on the Donate Now button to donate and the main page too. So I encourage you to do that. You spell Bedford with by B-E-D-F-O-R-D. That's how you spell Bedford. It's B-E-D-F-O-R-D. 
course, the abbreviation for Kentucky is KY. And the zip code has three zeros. That's 4006. That's P.O. Box 243, Bedford, Kentucky, 4006. So I encourage you, if you can, uh, mail your check or money order. Or it would be better if you could just do it online, if you can. But if you don't want to do it online electronically, you can uh, send your check or money order. And we'll be happy to receive your donation so we can continue to do God's work. So I encourage you to do that. I want to also share with you, I'm sure you already know this, I've said it many times, but I have Revival Radio Services. You can find them by going to revivalishere.org slash radio. That's the best way to hear it. Or if you're on a mobile device, go to m.blogtalkradio.com slash revivalishere. That's m.blogtalkradio.com slash revival is here from your mobile device. If you have a good internet package through your cell phone company or a, a good Wi-Fi connection, I encourage you to do that if you don't have a PC. But if you have a PC, like I said, it's revivalishere.org slash radio. That's the best way to, to listen to it. You won't have all them advertisements and everything on the, the pages. But if that don't work for you, you can go to blogtalkradio.com slash revivalishere. Or from your uh, podcast app on your iOS device or iTunes on your computer, just search for Revivals Here Ministries. And we'll pull up two. One will be for the uh, podcast. One will be for the Revival Radio Services. Of course, you can listen to the podcast on, your, on the, the web page by going to revivalishere.org. So I encourage you to do that. That's revivalishere.org. And all the other stuff will be on there. Links to the Revival Radio Service will be on that page. And the donation link and the mailing address and all that good stuff. So I encourage you to do that. And I want to thank everybody for their donations for the uh, food outreach for December. We was able to help out five families with five full meals. I'm really excited about that. They really needed it. They went to a good uh, families. And there was a real need there, and they was really excited to get that food, and it really reached out to people, and they was able to, we was able to get Bibles with that, on, just to reach out to people. So I'm really excited about that, and God is good, and I want to thank everybody for their donations to help make that possible. I'm just really thankful to do God's work. I really am. I love it. Just reaching out to people. This. People just loved, they loved receiving those food, food baskets, the food boxes. There was a big turkey in there for them, and they full meals. So I know it actually is enough for several days. So I was really excited about that. And I want to share with you, I have uh, a Facebook page and a Twitter account. You can go to facebook.com slash revival is here. Or twitter.com slash revival is here with the M afterwards. That's twitter.com slash revival is here M. I encourage you to like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter. And God will bless you. There's currently 348 people that like the Facebook page. I'm really excited about that. I encourage you to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And God will bless you for it. You will just really get a blessing for it. I post weekly updates on those. Then when I post a podcast, I will post it on there and get ready to do a live revival radio service. It will be posted on there. Lots of good things. When God downloads me something, I will post it on there and lots of good things. So I encourage you to do that and you'll be blessed. And I want to thank you for listening to this week's weekly podcast. I know God blessed you and I want you to remember to listen to the old podcast if you can and to check back next week also and to listen to next week's podcast. I'm Pastor Chan Smith, founder and senior pastor of Revival Share Ministries, saying God bless you and have a good day. This is copyrighted 2012 Revival is Here Ministries. Thank you and God bless.
Praise the Lord. This is Revival is Here Ministries by Senior Pastor, Pastor Chan Smith. I pray that you get something out of God's Word and God blesses you greatly today. In Jesus' name.